What's up, everybody? Josh here with Project Car Media, and welcome to the highly anticipated part three of the E36 track car series that I've been uh, filming. In this episode, we're going to actually go to a track and test out the uh, mods done to the car. Now, if you haven't seen part one or two, you definitely want to check them out before watching this. So let's go over a recap of what we did over episode one and two. Episode one, I showed you the car was bone stock, what I was going to do to it. Episode two, we had some upgrades installed, and I, I showed you all the different parts that um, I, I installed and Peak Innovation Motorsports installed. And then uh, this is going to be episode three, where we actually test this out on the track and see how it does, what needs to be changed, what needs to be added. So recap again, for parts, what we did is the Mishimoto electric fan. Uh, we also did the Mishimoto coolant expansion tank. We did the AFE intake. We did the energy steering wheel with the quick release hub. I uh, removed the uh, sunroof and put in a carbon fiber plug. Stole the seat from my drift car and put it in. Uh, it's a Corbo fixed back seat. And then we did some Bilstein PSS9 coilovers, brand new OEM driveline, and then an M3 uh, 323 LSD differential. And then I did a little uh, Mishimoto shift knob as well. So let's go test these mods out and um, see what we can do. race day here at Oregon Raceway Park. I'm super excited to get the car on the track and see how the car does with all the mods. It is very early still and it's very cold outside and dark so I'm in here doing the video in the trailer but I wanted to give you guys an update before we got started today which is when I got in last night and unloaded the car the first thing I did was open the door to the trailer and I smelled gas and then when I backed the car out I saw some dripping coming from the car in a little puddle from where it was sitting in the trailer. And then when I parked it outside, it looked like it was still dripping. So I thought, well, that's it for me. I'm not gonna be able to race this car on the track. But uh, I, I was tired, I was exhausted. So I just threw my drip pan underneath it. And when I went out this morning to take a look, it looked like there was no more dripping. Everything seemed to have stopped. So when it gets light out, I'm gonna take it down the pit and come back and see if anything comes out. And if everything looks good, then I'm probably gonna just, you know, I'll do a lap with a friend following me just to make sure that everything is not spilling out or fuel's not flying out at anybody. Let's see what this car can do.
We are back at home. That fuel issue that I was talking about earlier, turns out it was nothing. I think what happened was when I filled up the car in the trailer, the full tank, I think some of it like spilled out of a vent line or something and then ran down and dripped. I drove around the pits for a little bit. Nothing came out. I even took a lap around the track. I had a buddy follow me. Didn't see any fuel coming out. So it turns out that was nothing, which I was really going to be sad if, if I couldn't run the track today. So what worked, what didn't work, you know, what do we need to add? Big thing was the suspension. Those Bilstein shocks and springs were just amazing. I really enjoyed those. I really enjoyed the energy steering wheel. With the quick release hub, it had it basically bumped the steering wheel out and made it just a perfect uh, steering position for me. So I really enjoyed that. The other thing I really enjoyed was the sunroof plug. Uh, I had a ton of headroom over my helmet. I didn't have to worry about banging my head on the ceiling or anything like that because I am tall. I'm six foot five. That worked out really good. The intake was pretty good. It it gave me a little bit of power, but really, you know, you couldn't really hear it until you're almost at red line. So the one thing that I, I didn't quite like was my, my shifter. It looks cool, but it's one of those screw on types and it actually ended up coming loose. So I had to be careful not to pull it off while I was driving. And because I had the stock shifter, whenever I shifted, I almost would jam in my hand into the climate control. So I do need to get a short shifter for that. That's really my only complaint. Everything else worked really good. The, the Mishimoto fan and the expansion tank kept everything cool during the runs. The LSD differential, I felt a couple times when I'm taking really sharp corners, I have to get out of the hole. Uh, I definitely felt that working. So that was, that was a big help. I think for the future, after driving that car on the track, what I need to do is I need to get some smaller wheels and tires. The tires were sticky, but unfortunately they're, they're 17s and they're a stock wheel. So the one wheel and tire combo weighs about 50 pounds, which is a lot of rotating mass and it's a lot to stop. I could feel it around corners. I could feel it when I was trying to brake. I need to get back into some 15s with some sticky tires. I think that would help my gear ratio better. That would help with rotating mass and help with braking. I think I'm going to do that. I do have the stock wheels still, so I just need to get some slicks for them or something like that. I have stock sway bars on here still. So the other thing I'd probably do is aftermarket sway bars, uh, at least a front sway bar. I could feel a little bit of body roll around the corners and I, I could probably get rid of a lot of that with sway bars. A little bit down the road, I want to do something with the engine. It's a fun car. It is quick and everything, but I've only got 190 horsepower and that was when it was new back in 1993. I do need to get a little bit more oomph out of the engine. I don't know if maybe a supercharger, maybe a different engine like an S52 out of an M3 or something. I don't really want to go turbo again uh, just because I've had some issues with my drift car that's turboed. I'm not really sure what I'll do there, but I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think I should do an engine swap? Do you think I should turbo it, supercharge it? I've, I've seen LS swaps. I've seen 5 liter Ford swaps. I've seen M3 swaps, the S54 and the S52. I've seen built M50s out of these. Kind of leaning more towards something NA that's high revving, but I'm really up for any ideas. I really want to thank you guys for watching and sticking with me over these last three episodes. It's been really fun filming all three of them and planning them and writing them and stuff like that. It's really cool to see all that stuff come to fruition finally. Hopefully I can keep you guys updated and get sway bars or whatever. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, uh, please consider subscribing so you can follow along with some new videos. I hope this video or even this series gave you a little bit of inspiration to start a project car or finish your project car or maybe provided just a little bit of entertainment. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.